Not too long ago in the distant past, humans were yet to have invented boat travel. After we develop that, we soon travel with cars, then airplanes. The next big step is clear, interstellar travel. But distant stars and galaxies are not a stone's throw away, across a kilometer of land or ocean, but light years away. An incomprehensible void of space separates us from our stellar neighbors. So how would it even be possible to travel to another star? Stick around as we explore recent developments in interstellar travel technology, and where the future seems to be taking scientists in their pursuit of colonizing space. The latest and ongoing project for interstellar travel is Breakthrough Starshot, a $100 million concept founded by Yuri Milner, Stephen Hawking, and Mark Zuckerberg. This project serves to be a roadmap to interstellar flight, intending to embark on a journey to the Alpha Centauri star system that is sitting 4.37 light years away from Earth. Breakthrough Starshot may sound like something out of science fiction the way they are talking about achieving 20% the speed of light. But once the fundamentals of how the craft is going to function, it doesn't exactly seem to be that far-fetched. Firstly, how long would it take to reach the star? Well, if scientists can somehow get the probe to reach 15 to 20% the speed of light, then it would take between 20 and 30 years to complete the journey to Alpha Centauri B. From there, it would take around four years for any photographs and signals to return to Earth. Seeing another habitable planet in another solar system may be possible within our lifetimes. The Starshot envisions a mothership above Earth in orbit, carrying thousands of centimeter-sized spacecraft, which may weigh roughly 10 grams each. Lasers based on the ground serve the purpose to fire at the sails and accelerate them to the target speed in 10 minutes. Such a small size and weight means the ultralight probes are easier to accelerate and reach such a quick speed. Of course, having such a long distance between us and the target would mean dust and gas might destroy some of the crafts. That's why the concept envisions having so many. So, cosmologists and scientists know what needs to be done to bring the project to life. But what are the restrictions? Currently, the concept involves firing a gigawatt laser that has a beam width of 0.4 milli arc seconds. In order to do this, we would need a telescope on Earth with a 1 kilometer diameter. Unfortunately, the telescope with the largest diameter is currently being constructed and is only 40 meters wide. This means in order to lay the groundwork for this project, we would need a telescope with 600 times the area of the biggest one being made on Earth. Though, such a requirement for a big telescope can be mitigated if scientists make use of a phased laser array, multiple smaller beams that are aimed at the same spot, rather than one gigantic laser. Some interesting points arise when considering traveling to the edge of our galaxy, once we can finally bring humans with us. Firstly, due to long distances, the two groups of humans, the group in our solar system and the group at a distant star, will evolve independently of each other. For example, there may be less oxygen and available nutrients on the distant planet we settle on. Over time, likely on the scale of millions of years, this would probably manifest in humans on that planet being shorter. But before that happens, evolution may be of design. Scientists predict that in the future, people may pick the sex of their children and even details as hair and eye color with in vitro processes. If this occurs, we may see distinct humans on faraway planets designed to adapt to low gravity, for example, humans may look vastly different than they do today. Secondly, communication between solar systems will likely be very constrained. There is no calling your friends between galaxies or using fiber internet at such a distance. We've been leaking our radio signals into the vastness of space for over 100 years. But what is clear is that by the time they reach any distant stars, they are probably attenuated and reduced and mostly undecipherable scrambles of data. Hopefully by the time we've sorted interstellar travel, we have also solved the problem of connecting interstellar internet. One more point about interstellar travel is the unending expansion of the universe. Due to the way the universe has been stretching, growing, and expanding since the Big Bang, with an ever-rising entropy, galaxies and stars are gradually becoming more and more distant from one another. This undoubtedly makes it extremely difficult for future humans to travel to distant galaxies, and we will likely be constrained to our nearby cluster or even the Milky Way. The rules of time dilation heavily influence how we will perceive travel at such speeds. The faster that you go, the slower time passes for a traveler relative to the people back on Earth. If, hypothetically, we could send travelers on a journey at a speed of 99.996% of the speed of light for a single day, approximately one year on Earth would pass. By the time it has been one month for the people on board the ship, 30 years have passed back on Earth. Imagine this, a ship leaves in 1970 for a month-long voyage almost at the speed of light. What feels like a month for them means that entire decades, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s have passed on Earth. 
Every sitcom from these eras, every horror slasher, every 80s tune and mainstream usage of the internet have birth in just four weeks of being away from home. What is a realistic planet that we could travel to given we could achieve such speeds? Well, within the habitable zone of the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the sun is Proxima Centauri b, roughly four light years away. If someone left at light speed, it would feel like four days have passed for them, but four years would pass on Earth. Though it is unlikely there would be any signs of life on such a planet because the nearby star is a flare type of star with electromagnetic radiation that can tear away a planet's atmosphere. More curiously, Proxima Centauri b was found to be likely tidally locked. This means that as it orbits its star, one side of the planet faces the star and the other side faces away into the darkness of space, probably making that side extremely uninhabitable. Technology is advancing at an unheard of pace. Few megabytes of data used to be stored in hard disks that would fill your room up. Now we have terabytes smaller than our fingernails in the form of micro SD cards, and this is only in the span of a few decades. This creates a problem that is often discussed in the scientific community concerned with interstellar travel. If we did ever end up sending a spaceship out, say hypothetically with technology from the year 2030, what happens in the year 5030 when we know our technology is so extremely advanced that we could send a ship out and have it reach the planet that our 2030 ship was going to reach in fractions of the speed? It's a problem of ethics. What if we sent out humans who lived and died on the spaceship for generations in 2030, confined in the void of space for their entire lives, with the only goal of reaching the planet? And what if they realized that we had sent out another ship in 5030 that passed them thousands of years ahead, colonizing the planet for generations before the first ship even arrives? What if that planet's humans then think the first ship are aliens coming down, when in reality they were just sent too early in our technological advancements? Furthermore, what if this has happened on Earth already? Only time can tell. That concludes the recent talks of interstellar travel that we have to date. We might have some time to go until these concepts aren't merely just that. Hypothesize ideas that we may achieve in the future given bigger telescopes and more compact circuitry. But what is clear is human perseverance. Traveling on land was sped up with cars. The ocean, once a terrifying unknown abyss to us, was traversed by early explorers who didn't know what was on the other side. And now space is left to us to explore, with the means already blueprinted. So, what do you think about Breakthrough Starshot? Do you think it will set off on its journey during our lifetimes? Do you expect scientists will find any signs of life? Let us know in the comments below.